This lecture is for Chemistry in the Earth System, continuing Unit 1.1, the topic of heat. The essential question for this lecture is, what are some examples that show how thermal energy is transferred by means of conduction, convection, and radiation? A little bit on the long side, but what are some examples that show how thermal energy is transferred by means of conduction, convection, and radiation? Three methods of transfer. Three methods of transfer. Heat and heat transfer can occur in three main ways. Conduction, convection, and radiation. In conduction, thermal energy is transferred between different areas of the same substance. Thermal energy, which is applied in one part of the substance, causes atoms and molecules in the substance to move more rapidly. This causes collisions with nearby particles, causing them to move faster as well. Further collisions transfer kinetic energy to particles farther away and so forth. Thus, thermal energy spreads throughout the substance. An example of conduction is the heating of one end of an iron bar. Conduction causes thermal energy to travel from the area of higher temperature to the area of lower temperature at the other end of the bar. Heat transfers, heat transfers energy until thermal equilibrium is reached. Conduction works best in solids because the atoms and molecules are close together. Metal solids make particularly good conductors of thermal energy for the same reason that they are good conductors of electricity. Their atoms have free electrons that can move easily through the metal and transmit the energy to the other particles through collisions. Materials with high, oh, sorry, tightly held electrons, such as wood and paper, make poor conductors. These materials are called insulators. A good, sorry, 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 a poor conductor is a good insulator. And a good insulator is a poor conductor. Also, conduction is not possible in a vacuum. This is why certain hydro flasks, like my Yeti cup, for example, are so popular. This works because there are no particles in a vacuum to transfer the energy. Air, which is a gas, has particles, but they are spread farther apart than they are in liquids or solids. Materials that have air spaces in them, for example, fiberglass insulation, plastic foam, feathers and down comforters, these, are all, these all effectively slow the transfer of thermal energy because of the presence of a vacuum. Or, again, air, which is not a vacuum, but more approximates a vacuum when compared to liquids and solids. Moving on to convection. Convection is the transfer of energy by way of moving molecules in fluids specifically. Fluids include liquids and gases. Convection works because of differences in fluid density. Less dense fluids tend to rise, while more dense fluids sink. When thermal energy is applied to one part of a mass of fluid, mass of fluid, Nearby particles become more energetic and spread apart. The fluid in that area becomes, therefore, less dense. Less dense fluid rises away from the heat source, while more dense fluid sinks to take its place. Eventually, the heated fluid cools, becomes denser again, and then sinks. The resulting cycle of moving fluid transports thermal energy. The upward flow of hot air above a room heater is an example of convection. Hot air moves away from the heater, 
The cool air moves to replace it. The air in the room circulates, therefore. Similarly, convection circulates air in the atmosphere, which affects the weather. The sun transfers energy to Earth's surface, and air near the surface warms, becomes less dense, and then rises. Cooler air rushes in underneath, which causes wind. Convection is also important in the world's ocean currents. Cold, dense water near Earth's poles sinks and moves along the bottom of the seafloor. Water warmed near the equator and pushed by wind and Earth's rotation moves along the surface toward the poles. Warm water passes near land masses, warming them and significantly affecting their climate. Our last type of heat transfer is radiation. Radiation is the transfer of energy by electromagnetic waves. Energy from the sun arrives on Earth by radiation. Unlike conduction and convection, it can travel through a vacuum. Thermal interaction by radiation does not require any physical contact. Radiation, uh, sorry, radiant energy uh, includes radiation from all across the electromagnetic spectrum from the short wavelengths and high frequencies of gamma rays, which are on the right side of this figure, through visible light, which is that small portion in the middle of this figure, to the long wavelengths and low frequencies of microwaves and radio energy on the left side of this figure. All objects are at a temperature above absolute zero and therefore they emit some form of electromagnetic radiation. The radiation wavelength an object emits the most, which is known as its peak wavelength, is inversely proportional to its absolute temperature in kelvins. We see on the screen here, Wine's Law, which we won't use, but it does exist. Some objects such as the sun and incandescent light bulbs, for example, emit radiation that includes the visible portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. Moving from the blue-violet end of the visible light spectrum toward the red end, the wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation get longer and the frequencies get lower. Again, as you go from the blue-violet end of the visible spectrum toward the red end, again on the screen here, it'd be from left to right, the wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation get longer, and the frequencies get lower. At frequencies just below those of red light, which would be off the screen to your right here in this example, are in the infrared range, and our eyes no longer perceive the radiation as light. However, we can feel it as heat. You guys know that a hot fire emits some of its radi uh, radiant energy as the visible flames and glowing embers, but some as the invisible infrared energy that we feel as heat and warmth. At this point, you should be able to construct a full and appropriate response to today's essential question. What are some examples that show how thermal energy is transferred by means of conduction, convection, and radiation.